Hinilawad. Hinilawad means tales from the mouth of the Halawad River. Hinilawad is an epic poem written by the early inhabitants of a place called Sulod in central Panay. This 28,000 verse epic is chanted when performed and would take about three days when performed in its original form, making it one of the longest epics known. This is how our story begins. When the goddess of the eastern sky, Aluncina the Unmarried One, reached maidenhood, the king of gods, Kaptan, decreed that she should marry. All the unmarried gods tried to win her hand to no avail. Instead, she chose to marry a mortal, Datu Paubari, the mighty ruler of Kulawan. Her decision angered her other suitors. They plotted to bring harm to the newlyweds. A meeting of the Council of Gods was called by Makliung Satiwa, god of the plains, where a decision by those present was made to destroy Halawad by flood. Aluncina and Pohobari escaped harm through the assistance of Suklang Malayon, the goddess and guardian of happy homes and sister of Aluncina, who learned of the evil plot and warned the two so they were able to seek refuge on higher ground. After the flood water subsided, Obari and Aluncina returned to the plains secretly. They settled near the mouth of the Halawad River. Several months later, Aluncina became pregnant and told Paobari to prepare the siklot. She delivered a set of triplets and summoned the high priest Pungot Banwa to perform the rites of the gods of Mount Majaas to ensure the good health of the children. The high priest made an altar and burned some alanghiran fronds and a pinch of kamanyan. When the ceremony was over, he opened the windows of the north side of the room. A cold wind came in and suddenly the three infants transformed into strong, handsome young men. Labaw Dunggon, the eldest of the three, asked his mother to prepare his magic cape, hat, belt, and kampilan, for he heard of a place called Handug, where a beautiful maiden named Angoy Ginditinan lived. The journey took several days. He walked across plains and valleys, climbed up mountains, until he reached the mouth of the Halawad River. When he finally met the maiden's father and asked for her hand in marriage, the father asked him to fight the monster Manalintad as part of his dowry. He went off to confront the monster and with the help of his magic belt, Labaw Dongon killed the monster. To prove his feat, he brought to Angoy Ginbitinan's father the monster's tail. After the wedding, Labaw Dunggon proceeded home with his new bride. Along the way, they met a group of young men who told him that they were on their way to Tarambang Burok to win the hand of Abyang Durunuun, sister of Sumpoy, the lord of the underworld, and whose beauty was legendary. Labaw Dunggon and his bride continued on their journey home. The moment they arrived home, Labaw Dunggon told his mother to take care of his wife, because he was taking another quest. This time, he was going to Tarambang Burok. Before he can get to the place, he has to pass a ridge guarded by a giant named Sikai Padulugtog, who has a hundred arms. The giant would not allow Labaw Dunggon to go through without a fight. However, Sikai Padulogdog was no match to Labaw Dunggon's prowess and skill in fighting. He gave up and allowed him to continue. Labaw Dunggon won the hand of Abyang Durunuun and also took her home. Before long, he went on another journey. This time, it is to Gadlum to ask for the hand of Malitong Yawa Sinagmaling Diwata, who was the young bride of Sarangnayan, the Lord of Darkness. This trip required him to use his black boat, otherwise known as 
Biday nga inagta, on which he sailed across the seas for many months, went across the region of the clouds, and passed the land of stones, until finally he reached the shores of Tulugmantian, which was a seaside fortress of Saragnayan. The moment he set foot on the ground, Saragnayan asked him, Who are you? And why are you here? I am Labaudungkun, son of Tatu Vaubari and goddess Alansin of Halawad, and I came for the beautiful Malitong Yawa Sinagmaling Diwata. Saragnayan laughed. He told Labaudungkun that what he wished for was impossible to grant because she was his wife. Labaudungon then challenged Saragnayan to a duel, saying that whoever wins will have her. The challenge was accepted and they started fighting. Labaudungon submerged Saragnayan underwater for seven years. But when he let go of him, Saragnayan was still alive. The latter uprooted a coconut tree and started beating Labaudungon with it. He survived the beating but was not able to surpass the powers of Saragnayan's pamlang, and eventually he gave up and was imprisoned by Saragnayan beneath his house. Back home, both the wives of Labao Longon delivered sons. Angoy Ginbitinan's child was named Asamanga, and Abyang Durunuon's son was called Abyang Baranugon. Only a few days after they were born, Asamanga and Abyang Baranugon embarked to look for their father. They rowed their sailboats through the region of eternal darkness, past the region of the clouds and the land of stones, finally reaching Saragnayan's home. Saragnayan noticed that Abyang Baranugon's umbilical cord had not yet been removed. He laughed and told the child to go home to his mother. Abyang Baranugan was slighted by the remarks and immediately challenged Saragnayan to a duel. They fought and Abyang Baranugan defeated Saragnayan and won his father's freedom. Labaudungon's defeat and imprisonment by the Lord of Darkness also angered his brothers. Humadapnon was so enraged that he swore to the gods of Majaas that he would seek revenge on all of Saragnayan's kinsmen and followers. Umadapnon prepared to go to Saragnayan's domain. He employed the aid of Buyong Matanayon of Mount Matiula, who was well known for his skill in swordsmanship. For their journey, they rode on a sailboat called Biday Nga Rumba Rumba. They traveled through the region of the clouds, passed by the region of eternal darkness, and then ended up at a place called Tarambang Burirao. In this place was a ridge called Talagas Kutingtang, where a seductive sorceress named Piganum lived. Buyong Matanayon begged with Humadapnon to leave the place, but he refused. After seven months passed, Buyong Matanayon remembered that they have brought with them some ginger. One evening at dinner time, Buyong Watanayan threw seven slices of ginger into the fire. When Piganon smelled the odor of burning ginger, she left the dinner table because sorcerers hated the smell of ginger. Immediately, Buyong Watanayan struck Madapnon, who became unconscious. He dragged his friend with him and they were able to escape. They continued with their trek, and everywhere they went, they exacted revenge on all of Saragnayan's people and relatives. One day, they reached a place called Piniling Tubig, who was ruled by Datu Umbao Pinaumbao. There was a big gathering in the village. When they asked what was going on, they were told that the Datu was giving his daughter for marriage whoever can remove the huge boulder that rolled from a mountain into the center of the village. Many men tried their luck, but no one so far was able to move the stone. Umadapnon took off his magic cape and used it to lift the stone and threw it back into the mountain. The Datu kept his word 
and Humadapnon married his daughter. During the wedding feast, Humadapnon heard about the beauty of the goddess of greed. Burigadang pada sinaklang bulawan. After the wedding, Humadapnon went to seek the hand of the goddess of greed. Along the way, he encountered Buyong Makabagting, son of the mighty Datu Balahijong of Palid Bukid, who was also traveling with the same purpose in mind. Upon learning Humadapnon's intent, Buyong Makabagting challenged him to a duel. They fought, and Buyong Makabagting was no match to Humadapnon's strength and skill. The fight ended when Buyong Makabagting surrendered and even promised to aid Humadapnon in his quest. Humadapnon married the goddess of creed, Brigadang Padasinaklambulawan, and brought her home. Meanwhile, right after Humadapnon left to seek Saragnayan's followers and relatives, his brother Dumalaptap left for Burutlakan Kaadlao. Here lives a maiden named Lubay Lubyok Hanginun Simahuyok Huyokon. For the trip, he brought along Dumasig, the most powerful wrestler in Majaas. Several months later, they came to a place called Tarambuan Kabanwa, where they encountered a two-headed monster named Balanakon, who guarded a narrow ridge leading to the place where the maiden lived. With the aid of Dumasig, Dumalaptap killed Balanakon. However, upon approaching the gate of the palace where the maiden lived, he was confronted by Uyutang, a bat-like monster with the sharp poisonous claws. There ensued a bloody battle between Dumalaptap and the monster. They fought for seven months, and their skills seemed to be equal. But on the seventh month, Dumalaptap was able to break Uyutang's ankle. Then, he took his iwang daniwan and stabbed Uyutang under the armpit. Uyutang cried so loud that the ridge they were fighting broke into two. Half of the ridge became the island of Puglas, or Negros, and the other became the island of Panay. Tumalaptap married Lubay Lubyok Hanginon si Mahuyok Huyukan and took her home. Babanam ke walam, babanam ke walam. Datu Paubari was very happy when he was reunited with his three sons. He prepared a feast in their honor. After the celebration, the three brothers left for different parts of the world. Labau Donggon went north. Umadapnon went south, Dumalaptap to the west, and Datu Paubari remained 